Now, if I'm going to freeze it here, I'm sorry, I said I was going to let it run, but um, we saw you holding something up. Can you describe, and again, for the record, this is 745.10, describe for the jurors what you were doing there. Oh, I was holding up the $20 bill that I just received. And is that something you always do or something about this? No. When I um, saw the bill, I noticed that it had a blue pigment to it, kind of how a $100 bill will have. And I found that odd, so I assumed that it was fake. Okay. But Mr. Floyd is still there, correct? Yes. Um, and you completed the transaction? Yes. All right. And then upon doing that, did he leave the store? Yes. All right. So now let's let that run, please. So after you looked at the bill, though, he didn't leave immediately, did he? No. All right, so that is the uh, end of Exhibit 29, I believe the uh, time there is 7.45.51, correct? Well, I'm asking you, but you saw that on the timestamp on there. Correct. So we could look at other video to determine if that time is correct. That's the time he left the store on this video. Yes. All right. After he left, did you uh, look at the bill again? I did. All right. At the time that you were working on May 25th of 2020, what was the store policy about uh, cashiers accepting $20 bills? The policy was that if you took a counterfeit bill, you would have to pay for it out of your money or your paycheck. And it gives you an incentive to be careful about what you take? Yes. All right. So did you think that bill might not be legitimate? I didn't. So what did you decide to do? Um, I took it anyways, and I was planning to just put it on my tab um, until I second-guessed myself. And as you can see in the video, I kept examining it, and then I eventually told my manager. All right. And when you told your manager, um, what what happened next? What, what, was, what were you told to do? He told us to go out to the vehicle and to ask him to come inside to discuss what just went, just happened. And uh, when you say vehicle, what are you referring to? Uh, the car or the SUV, I think, that George Floyd was in. How did you know that? Um, I could see it from where I was standing in tobacco from the store. So we know from the video that those windows we could see where that bus was, that's actually Chicago, correct? Yes. 38th runs along the backside of that store. Yes. Was, is there a way to look then out on the 38th from the store? Yes. And, and I guess what I'm questioning is, how did you know he was in that vehicle? I watched him walk to it. Pretty good way to know. Yes. Um, and so you saw him go out to that vehicle after he made this purchase? Yes. Right. And so your manager, um, you know, what were your instructions? Just to go out to the vehicle and ask him to come inside to talk to the manager. And did you, in fact, do that? Yes. All right. When you went out there, um, well, let me ask you this. How many times did you go out there? Twice. So let's talk about the first time that you went out there. Did you go by yourself or with some other people? The first time I went with one other person. All right. And you um, are aware that there is a security video on the restaurant across the street, correct? Yes. That's the Dragon Walk was the restaurant? Yes. And prior to coming to court, we showed you uh, some security video that captured you and other employees going out to the, to the vehicle, correct? Yes. And that also shows um, 
we also use some of the footage from inside the store to show when you guys leave the store to go out there. Is that correct? Yes. And having reviewed that video, does it all fairly and accurately depict the times that you and other employees went out to the SUV about the bill? Yes. Right. You know, we are going to offer Exhibit 31. And so we see you then um, here sort of behind your coworker. Um, and uh, tell us about then, did you have a conversation with the occupants of the car? Sort of. I notified them that they needed to come back into the store and that the bill was fake and that my boss wanted to talk to them. To George, actually, sorry, not to both of them, just to George. And so when you approached the car from the passenger side, did you see how many people were in the car? Three. And uh, where were the three people in the car? George was in the driver's seat, um, his friend was in the passenger seat, and there was a woman in the back seat in the middle, or possibly on the right back behind the passenger. And so had you seen any of those individuals before that day? No. Um, had you seen them in the store earlier? Just the male. Okay. And when you had this conversation at the vehicle, who were you talking to? The person that George was with. So the guy in the passenger seat, the front seat? Correct. Passenger? And did you make any observations at that time of Mr. Floyd? Correct. What did you see regarding Mr. Floyd? He just seemed like he didn't like want this to happen. Like he was just kind of like, ah, oh, like why is it happening? Sort of a thing. Did he seem uh, awake? Yes. And did he talk to you at all? Not really. He just kind of shook his head. And the passenger uh, in the front passenger seat, um, did he talk to you at all? Correct. And, and I want you to tell us what he said, but um, in the end result, did they agree to come into the store? No. When you were there at the vehicle, who did you do most of the talking to? The person in the passenger seat. And did you think that you were talking loud enough for uh, the other people in the vehicle to hear you? Correct. And so then after that conversation, what did you do after that? Um, I went back inside with my coworker. And when you got back inside the store, what did you do? Uh, I told my manager that he did not want to come into the store. And uh, did you get some further direction then from your manager? Correct. And what was that? Go back outside again and tell him to come inside the store so we can talk to him. All right. So try it again, in other words. Correct. And then um, for that second trip, did you go with some different uh, some other coworkers? Correct. What was going on at this point in time? Um, I think that was the uh, conversation I had with my manager um, when I was saying that uh, he did not want to come inside, but I, I would I'd offer to pay, but he said, no, just tell him to come back inside. So did you tell your manager you would just take care of the 20? I believe so. I did. And uh, But he directed you then to go back to the vehicle again. Correct. Now, we saw you go out on the first trip with another individual, another employee. Correct. And he did not come back into the store, did he? No, he left. Okay. And so when you were uh, told by the manager to go out a second time, did you take some other coworkers with you? Correct. Whose idea was that? I'm not sure. Okay. For the record, now we're back outside again, correct? Correct. And the record should reflect that we paused at 2021-43. So we see the two other individuals coming out before you, correct? And there's a, appears to be a woman in a black jacket, correct? Correct. And is she a coworker or was she at the time? Correct. And she worked there longer than you? Correct. And the other individual has a white t-shirt on and he worked there longer than you? Correct. And is he actually related to the owners of the store? Correct. And so they were uh, out ahead of you at this point, correct? Correct. In fact, you had to sort of jog to keep up with them, didn't you? Correct. The record should reflect we're at 20, 22, 15 as the timestamp when we paused it. The individual in the white t-shirt initially went up to the driver's side, correct? Correct. And we see you standing here behind the SUV, correct? Correct. And uh, eventually the uh, individual in the white t-shirt went around to the passenger side door, which was open. Correct. And were you able to hear uh, the conversation at the 
the guy in the white T-shirt was having with the occupants of the vehicle? At this mo at this point in time, I was not able to hear. So then let's run the video some more, please. All right, now we see if we can pause here, please. This is 2022-21. You walked up um, to the passenger side of the SUV, correct? Correct. So at this point, were you able to hear the conversations that the individual in the white T-shirt was having with the occupants? Correct. And were you also able to hear what the occupants of the vehicle were saying and doing? Correct. And can you describe for the jurors then what occurred during this period at the SUV? So in this, the second time we went out, <clears throat> the person in the passenger seat was doing most of the talking. Um, we were telling him, just come inside. We just want to talk to George. And the person in the passenger seat was saying how that's not me. Like, I tried to use a fake bill and you put me on game, so I ripped it. And that'll happen in the video because he also tried to use a fake bill that I did not let him use. And then he ripped it and he put it on the ground there. So he was just explaining like what happened. And so just to be clear, you said the passenger seat, you're talking about the front passenger seat? Correct. And at that time, did you have any interaction with Mr. Floyd directly? I do not recall. All right. So let's run exhibit 31 a little bit. I'm going to pause it here real quickly, please. And for the record, it's 20, 22, 34. Um, we saw the individual in the white T-shirt sort of bend over and pick something up. Can you tell the jury what was happening there? He was picking up the fake bill that the individual in the passenger seat tried to use. Okay. And the re reference earlier, one that was torn in half? Correct. Is that the bill that was torn in half? Correct. All right. The timestamp reflects 20, 23, 35. It appears the two of you are now walking away from the SUV, correct? Correct. So during those preceding moments, uh, it appears that the two of you are talking with at least some occupants of the vehicle. Correct. And did you have any conversations with Mr. Floyd, or was it just the, pass the front seat passenger? Just the front, front seat passenger. Were you able to see Mr. Floyd at all during that interaction? Correct. What, what did you see about him? Um, as I said earlier, he was just kind of shaking his head and putting his hands in the air, like, kind of like, why is this happening to me? Like, I don't want this to happen, sort of thing. And so he was, appeared to be awake? Correct. And, um, and uh, so what was the end result of that conversation? They did not, George Floyd did not choose to come into the store. Okay, neither did the passenger front. Correct. All right. All right, so that the end of that video shows you and the other individual entering back into the store, correct? Correct. Okay. When you got back into the store, um, what did you do about, you know, the two trips out to the, to the vehicle? We um, told our manager that he still refused to come into the store. And do you know what uh, uh, the manager decided to do about that? He instructed one of my coworkers to call the police. And uh, so did you know if that happened? Correct. That somebody did call the police? Correct. Uh, was it you who called the police about it? No. Was it another coworker? Correct. And um, did you uh, ask the coworker to make the call? No. And were you present when he made the call? Correct. Okay. So you were there next to him or something? Correct. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.